If done the right way, option trading can change your life, but it must be done in the correct way. In this video, I'm going to show you two simple ways to trade options that will minimize your risk while lining you up for potentially big returns. Now, the first way you can trade options is actually not my favorite. I'll share my favorite next. But the first way to trade options is to buy a put option. But if you're going to do it, you need to do it with a twist. And I'll share that twist with you in just a minute. So how do you use buying options to decrease risk and line up for a potential win? Well, here you see four charts of ADI. The top right is the hourly chart. The bottom left is the daily chart. And the bottom right is the weekly chart. We'll focus here on this daily chart in the bottom left. Over the past several months, ADI has been in a nice uptrend. It's riding this red 200 exponential moving average as support. When we find it right back down at that moving average to benefit if ADI went back up in price. We could simply buy the stock. As you see right here, it's currently trading for around $190 per share. So if you bought 100 shares worth of ADI, it would cost you right at $19,000. Let's say you didn't have $19,000 or you didn't want to risk $19,000. How could you use options to receive the benefit if ADI went up in price? Well, you could do what's called buying a call option. But again, remember, I said I'd do this with a twist and that twist is very important. And I'll share that twist with you in just a minute. So what call options should you buy? Well, there's almost unlimited choices as to which call options to buy. So I'm just going to share with you a couple of examples here. Let's say you felt pretty strongly that over the next 31 days, ADI was going to go up in price. With it trading right around $109 per share, you might consider buying the $195 call option. Now again, this is not my suggestion because this is not my favorite way to trade options, but I'm just giving you an example here. So if we believe that ADI would be above 195 over the next 31 days, we might buy the 195 call option. Notice that's currently trading for around $5.10 per share to $5.40 per share. So let's kind of go in the middle. We'll say it costs us around $5.25 per share. Now in order for this option to be profitable, it would need to be above not only 195, but it also have to cover the $5.25 this would cost you approximately to buy this call option. But if it got above there over the next 31 days, you should potentially have a profit for buying this call option. Instead of risking $19,000, you've only risked approximately $5 per share times 100 shares that one contract is worth. So basically you'd be risking around $525. The problem though is this column right here. Notice it's labeled theta. You see this option on average will lose about 11.9 cents per share per day. That's a problem. That's like trying to swim up the river against the current. I mean, that's a difficult current to overcome. So we're losing basically 12 cents per share per day on this call option. That's one reason why I don't like buying short-term call options. So how could you help yourself out? What's the twist that I do if I buy shorter-term call options? We well, might consider doing what's called turning it into a spread. How would that work? Well, you bought the 195 call option. You might consider selling the $200 call option. For selling that option, you should get around $3.45 per share. Now, instead of risking $5.25 per share, since you sold that $200 call option against the $195 call option you own, you were paid $3.45 per share. So if you do the math, that spread would cost you $1.80 per share. That's a lot less than the $5.25 per share that just buying the 190 call option was going to cost you. Since you bought the 195 call option and sold the $200 call option, then the maximum this spread will be worth at expiration is $5. Remember, it costs you $1.80 per share. So if you do the math, you could potentially walk away with a profit of $3.20 per share. Now that would happen if ADI was at or above $2 per share when this option expired. But keep in mind, you're only risking $1.80 per share. On the other hand, if ADI were to stay where it's at or go down, you could potentially lose that entire $1.80 per share. And you could do the opposite to this using put options if you thought a stock or the market was going to go down. You go through the same process using put options. You could buy, for example, the 190 put option and then sell the $185 put option against it. Then if the stock went down, you get some benefit from the 190 put option that you bought. But that $185 put option, although it'd limit your return, it also also help your position not lose as much time value due to time value decay, otherwise known as theta. Although I do buy options sometimes, when I buy them, they're usually longer term options. They're usually what's called leaps options or options that expire in over a year. And the reason is that theta is a lot lower. Notice if we go out 640 days to the January 2026 expiration, that same $200 call option, if we bought that one, it only loses about three cents per day. So about a fourth of the time decay as the option expires here in about 31 days. The second way you can use options to in a very simple and easy way, make consistent cash flow returns is actually my favorite. And that way is to sell options. But again, there's a twist. And I'll share that twist with you in just a minute. Before I share with you a real life example that I just did selling options, 
let me make sure you understand what exactly you're agreeing to when you sell someone an option. So we're still here on the option channel with ADI. And I like to sell generally, especially in a bullish or neutral market, I like to sell put options. Let's say again that we like ADI, we think it's probably going to continue going up in price. How can we sell an option to receive some benefit if that were to happen? So we'll go back to our ADI example. With ADI trading around $109 per share, you might consider selling a put option. Let's take for example this 185 put option in ADI. If we sold that put option, then basically we're telling the buyer of that option that we'll be sitting here waiting for you if you want to sell ADI to us at any point between now and expiration, which is about 31 days from now. So you're basically telling me you have a guaranteed buyer at $185 per share if you decide that you want to do that. For that, they're gonna pay us premium. You see they'll pay us somewhere between $4.20 per share and $4.50 per share. So we'll just say they'll pay us $4.35 per share for giving them that insurance. Now keep in mind, you don't have to stay in this trade the whole 31 days. If you decide that you wanna get out, you can always buy that option back that you sold for the going price. And you might do that if the market were to go against you or if the option were to lose enough value so that you had a nice profit before expiration. You could always buy it back early to close it out. And one nice thing about that is that instead of time working against you, since you've sold this option, Notice this theta column here, which is time decay, that option that you would sell loses about nine and a half cents per day per share in value. That's one reason why I like selling options. Not only do we have a nice margin for error, that we're selling the 185 put option, and it was currently trading for around 190 per share, but we also have time working in our favor. It's kind of swimming with the current in a river as trying to swim against the current. I think we'll all agree it's a lot easier to swim with a current. And the current in this case is about nine and a half cents per share per day. Now I'll share with you a real life trade we did last month using this technique. And at the very end of this trade, I'm going to share with you that twist that I really encourage you to do that will really help you out if you're looking to sell options. Where you see these yellow errors are the three days that we sold put options against CFR. Notice that when I did this trade, it was trading for somewhere around $108 per share to a low of about $104 per share. Overall, CFR is a company I believe is currently undervalued. So if I can sell put options in it and get paid for selling that put option, then I'm happy to do so. But just in case CFR were to come down, I wanted to give myself some room to be wrong and still win on this trade. So how could I sell a put option, pocket some money, give myself a buffer or a margin for error and still potentially win? Well, I went way down here where you see the yellow line, I sold this $100 put option. When I see a stock that's setting up for a potential trade, I like to enter it slowly to see if the market agrees with me. And so as you see here on March 12th, I sold my first put option against CFR. We sold the CFR April 19th, $100 cash secure put option. As you see that option expired in a little over a month. For that, we pocketed a dollar and 20 cents per share. With everything still looking good as far as the technical setup, the next day we did it again. We sold another one and got another dollar and 20 cents per share. And then finally on the 14th, or two days after our initial position, we sold one more of the CFR April 19th, one of our cash care put options. And for that one, we got a little more premium because CFR had come down, so we got a dollar and 60 cents per share. So what's happened here? Well, we have a stock that I believe is currently undervalued, and we sold put options about four to 8% below where the stock was currently trading at. And to do that, we pocketed from a dollar and 20 cents per share to a dollar and 60 cents per share. And all we pocketed right at $400 for selling these three cash secure put options in CFR. In just a minute, I'm going to show you how this trade turned out. But before I do that, I want to share that twist with you that said was very important for you to do if you're going to trade a similar type of strategy. Here's the twist. Notice on the 14th, we also bought some put options. Remember, we'd sold the $100 put option. What we did is we bought the $75 put option. That capped our potential loss. Remember, when you sell somebody a put option, you're selling them insurance or selling them the opportunity to sell their stock to you at a certain price. So to limit our potential loss, we bought a put option. We bought the same expiration day, April 19th, $75 put option. Buying that cheap insurance is a nice way to cap your potential loss in case something negative were to happen with the stock you're trading in or the underlying market. Since we sold the $100 put option and bought the $75 put option, our max loss is $25 per share minus the credit of $400 total that we received up front. How did this trade turn out? As you see here on April 10th, we closed this position out early. This option wasn't scheduled to expire for nine more days until April 19th. But since the option had gone down in value, we closed it out nine days early. And as you see here in the green lettering, we walked with a profit of $356 minus that cheap insurance that we bought. Now I could have done what's called 
rolling this option or selling the option expires the next month. In this case, it would have been May. But I wanted to get out of this position because as you see here on Earnings Whisper, it's scheduled to announce earnings on April 25th. So I wanted to be out of this position, if at all possible, when CFR announced earnings. After earnings, which should happen on April 25th, I'll look for new opportunities to sell some put options against CFR. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefit of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Selling options is my favorite way to generate monthly and consistent cash flow and returns. However, it's very important that you understand all the risk you're taking when you sell an option. If you'd like to see all the risk you're taking whenever you sell a put option, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled, Is Selling Put Options Safe? Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.